Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh to someone and peace out to the rest of you. Hit the share button because the message is more important than the messenger. With that being said, uh, I will start, um, of course, by giving uh, thanks and gratitude where it is due. Um, I now am going to thank uh, Red Falls Black and uh, L.K. Mayweather. Uh, for coming through on the cash app more recently. And I thank you from the bottom of my black heart and from the depths of my black mind. Um, I want to state this is a response, as you see in the title, uh, the response is to Kendra D, not Kendra G, but to Kendra D, Crimson Cure. And it is an answer to a question. She stated when she uh, uh, in her video about why women cheat on good men. Um, she showed women who stated that she did so out of boredom. And I know that there are a lot of women that would not necessarily cheat, especially on men who don't deserve it. But she said, I don't know why these women get the good men. And I'm going to answer that question. I'm answering that question as a formerly good man. I just like you got guys that say they used to be street dudes used to be gang bangers, used to be pookies, stereotypes. You get the idea. They used to, and, and they have a reason for being a former take your pick. I mean, that's, you know, if you didn't used to do these things, you might as well act like you did anyway so that you can uh, bit gitches if you don't want to be a genetic dead end. And let's be honest, if you're a guy like that and you're black, that not only enhances the number of, of women that are now available to you and will make themselves such, but it also enhances the looks of those women. So, I mean, yeah, it, it enhances your chances of reproductive success uh, in the black West in the Anglophone black new world, the, 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 the new world African diaspora. It does enhance that. And when I say new world, I'm talking about the Anglophone nations in it specifically. I'm not so sure about the Francophone. I don't know how bad it is. I mean, I, I don't know if in Martinique and, and Haiti, you have to be um, a knuckle dragging stereotype to get uh, more and better looking women interested in you. I'm not sure. From what I understand, it's not necessary in Spanish speaking um nations of the Americas. So, um, <clears throat> I'm just going, I, I'm going to tell you that I am quite sure that that's what the case is, uh, in the Anglophone new world. I've talked about this. The reason Mrs. Davis, that, uh, these, ladies get the good guys is because they will seek them out. Women that won't do harm, especially amongst our people, women that aren't out to harm men also don't even make the least bit of effort to get a man. They don't even want to show that they're, they're interested. They um, don't want these men to have the slightest idea really that they're interested. They, these women um, go out of their way to sit back. Um, and you have women that will cheat and they won't do anything to get a man's attention to make themselves known. But the women that won't also won't even so much as um, try to shoot their shot. I'm not saying it's wrong for them to shoot their shot. I'm saying that they are the ones who they, they will not do. It. They will not try. They're the ones that are most demanding of being pursued. Many women are demanding of being pursued and refuse to do any sort of pursuit themselves, but those are the ladies that are the most demanding of being pursued. They are the most serious about it. No, I'm not going to, uh, I don't make the first move, not, not even a little bit. So, in, inevitably what does happen, see, if you're one of the good guys, you're also, we already know, you're the least pursued. And so, um, because of that, these, uh, these ladies have their minds made up. 
you're the least um, uh, irresponsible and you're the most responsible. Um, so you're already boring and the good women are just as they're even more unlikely at times. Well, I mean, they are. I just said that they are more unlikely and less likely to even shoot a shot. They will behave when they're interested in you. They'll behave exactly the way that women and girls behaved before they would later say, oh, no, you just my friend. I don't see you like that. So when you're a good guy, you learn not to shoot your shot because the women that, that show you some choosing signals will later tell you those choosing signals are, uh, uh, were not real, that you know you were imagining them. See, when you're young and you're black and you're a man and you're responsible and you're non-stereotypical, well, let's say you're a boy, really, it starts before you're even an adult, you learn subconsciously, then overtly consciously, that there's this push, this social trend to not validate you as a viable mate. That's what you learn. It's one of the first things you learn. Then later, sadly, you're told that that's going to change as people mature and then you get older and that doesn't really change that much. And it's not the age of the women and the maturity of the women that determines when they start to uh, uh, at least treat you as equals to other men. It's more so just um, how few how few other men want them and how many kids they have and maybe even how much debt they have. And to be honest with you, there's actually a growing uh, awareness amongst some of these men of how many women are going to give them a chance when they have diseases. Not when the men have diseases, but when the women develop it. Oh yeah, there are guys that, in, that find that women come to them um, and then later say, I've got something to tell you. I have herpes, stuff like that. I mean, there are guys out there that it's, it's you know, it's, it's not just kids that women have when they come to them. They find that, okay, she came to me because she has kids. She came to me because she got herpes. She came to me because she got debt. <laughs> and, and she came to me because she just can't find nobody else. And, um, and see, when you're a responsible black male, before you are even an adult, you've already learned that you're not you're not being um, sought out, but some guys are. But then the next lesson to learn is see, there comes a point where somebody starts to show you some choosing signals. Then you see what they have wrong with them. And you might think at first, well, this is normal because everyone's got something wrong because a human. So, you know, this guy that's been succeeding with women is facing these things. And then you find out later on, he's not facing the same things. Because the women aren't bringing the same baggage to him. He's just running through them. And maybe you know another player that's actually a player, not just pretending. And you check with him and you find out that sometimes they come with that baggage and sometimes they don't. But you find out he, he's not limited to that. And so you begin to find out that there has to be something. So when you find a woman that's not coming with these baggages... Then she cheats. So by the time a man is approached by these women, either whether it's approaching or just being shown some choosing signals for him to make it, whatever the case is, by the time he sees that and she's, uh, uh, she turns out to have cheated, he done already learned that there's going to be something. And then he learns it again. Okay. So she's going to come to me with the babies. She's coming to me because she's fat. She's coming to me because she got herpes. She's coming to me because don't nobody else want it except for a smash. Wait a minute. So she actually has choices in men. She ain't coming to me with the kids, the debt, the herpes. She's not coming with these things. But I find out she just cheating. So that's why she was with me because she wasn't going to be faithful no way. But I'm faithful to her. Oh, so all the time what they're doing is they're showing me that I'm inferior. 
Now I'm about to behave in such a way as to deserve it because that's all that's there. Not everybody's got to deal with this, but since I always got to deal with something that's grossly inappropriate for me to deal with, now I'm going to start to deserve it. I'm not saying that this is always right. Ms. Davis, I'm not saying that. I'm merely saying that that's what the answer is to the question. How do these women wind up with the good men? It's simple. Just like evil spreads when good people do nothing, as I've stated before, bad women are willing to compete, even if what they're going to do is cheat on these men. They're willing to do it, and they don't have much competition anyway. Ladies that aren't going to do these men any harm, hell, they won't even try. They will not do anything. They will sit back and watch while these bad broads come and try to get at these dudes. No, she's not any good and will sit up and whisper to themselves, girl, it, does he know that she's about to, uh, she's going to cheat? Does, does he know that, does he know what she said in the locker room last week? No, he don't know. He was in the, in the guy's locker room. Girl, does he know what she said at that sleepover, that slumber party? How the hell he gonna know? He wouldn't at the girl sleepover in the slumber party. Father Huckers, he gonna know what they say. You see what's going on? And so they're willing to make, they're willing to, it's like that's the team that's willing to show up. Meanwhile, the good ladies are the team that they don't even want to show up for the game. They don't, they forfeit every game, every single match. They just forfeit. They're like, we ain't even in the league anymore. Yeah, but I'll be mean, okay. So the prize keeps being awarded to the women that don't deserve it, but they just didn't have the competition. They were unopposed. See, we're already in a culture toxic enough, as you mentioned, in the lost value system and, and the hyenas running things. It, it's true. You're right about this. I'm agreeing with you. Um, but one of the side effects of that is that these ratchet B words don't have to do a whole lot. And it's easy for people to sit back and say, well, how come these good dudes don't choose better? The better, like I said, won't even shoot the shot. And not only that, but the good dudes see it take, for men, it takes experience. Now, a man can either get out there and get the knocks on his own head and get the experience or he can learn from others experience. But a lot of men don't have experience to teach to other men. Social media has been helping with that. You got personal trainers that, that form the bulk of this uh, uh, experience, which they share. But even that is polluted with dating roaches telling you to spend certain amounts of money with them. And then they'll tell you what you need to know and that you, what you need to know. And that's going to include spending a bunch of money on, uh, you know, on clothes and cars and stuff you don't have and swag. And, you know, oh, and buy these expensive ass colognes, too. After that, it's like it never stops. Meanwhile, Dirty Dingaling, uh, Deontay doesn't have to do quite that much. I mean, you know, maybe spend a little bit on clothes he can't afford uh, or not. Um, and when he does that, hell, he doesn't even have to have a car. I have a car for what? I just use hers. And then that, before you know it, he's getting clothes and he doesn't have to buy them no more. Meanwhile, the responsible men have to turn around and, and do all of these things. So even the experience sharing on social media now is clouded. So men got to sift through it. It's always a lot through which to sift. So these men are the ones that are the least likely to be even allowed to know how to pick and what to look for as red flags. Is it right? No, I'm just answering the question as to why it is this way. I want to be wrong. I want this information that I'm sharing to be bad information. I want it to be lies. I want it to be untrue, but I'm saying it because it's what we can observe. A friend of mine in my hometown, Dark, as I told you all this, my daughter called him Uncle Dark. Um, he's, uh, he and Black Johnson and I hang out when I go back to my hometown to visit. It's about five seven or five six. He's got plenty of personality. He's funny as all get out, but see, Dark, and he Dark is a really good guy. Dark was completely under the radar 
of a lady named LH from my neighborhood. Now, LH has really been through the ringer. LH was a very nice looking um, lady, fine as a father mucker. She wanted them, she wanted them um, deeply melanated sisters that just, that everybody looks at and says, boy, she look good. And I'm not, I'm not saying she's dark, but she cute. That's what my childhood nemesis used to say. I'm saying she was dark and she fine in the father mucker. Now, when she was younger, she had options. She could have just about anybody. And she had a very good and diplomatic personality, too. I never knew that she was actually one of my father's patients. Now, my father said to me one day her name. And he said, you ever think about dating her? And I was like, actually, I did not. Because as cute as she is, not only is she three years older than I am, she dated uh, my homie Malik. Other thing, too, is, I mean, um, here's the thing. She was, see, Dark was under her radar because Dark was a year younger than her. Everybody wanted some of her. She wound up being a victim of a violent violation, if you will, a crime. Guy was just crazy. Just, it was crazy. He was homeless. His, his, he lost touch with his family a long time ago. He just happened to um, somehow wander into the house. And she's just home alone. She said she just woke up um, feeling like someone right. And he just walked in. And she was like, who, who are you and who let you in? And he looked at her like, oh, just pulled his pants off and jumped on. He said that she said that he was very strong and very violent. And that he was walking around our neighborhood just naked when she called the cops they got him. He, he, um, anyway, I didn't realize that for some of the um, injuries, she was my father's patient. She told me later. My dad didn't tell me. He just asked what I thought about dating her. But I think she'd been his patient before the crime. When he asked me, I, I, I don't think that she'd been a victim of this. The thing is that I'm saying this to tell you that she'd been through that. Now, fast forward up to today's age. This means that she's about to turn. Um, well, no, I think she's turned 50, actually. Okay. Are you see where I'm going with this? Dark. Like I said, dark. No, dark's two years younger than her, I believe. So dark... I guess they were an item for a while. Guess what the funny thing is? When they finally were able to get together, mind you, this was 2019. This is when I was starting my uh, uh, my next phase of this same channel. My channel is old, but I started really recording and dropping stuff in 2019. This was only a few weeks after I, I uh, uploaded the one, my first one about Aisha Curry. That's the video that got the most views. She was living in Atlanta and Dark, who had lived in Atlanta, was now living back in my hometown. And he'd been living back in my hometown for the better part of a decade by this point. I believe he moved back in 05. So he had been, wait, 06, 07. So Dark had been living back in our hometown for about at least 12 years by the time they were getting together and she was living in Atlanta. And I was like, Dark, you can't tell me that I need to change my attitude about these O's. Why did she not get with you when she was living in town? Now all of, now y'all can get together? How old are y'all? Now you're having to decide between having to decide between a doctor in the Dominican Republic that treats you well or LH. Find us a father mucker, but um, come on, bro. It's a no brainer. It's the one in the DR. And if you're about to retire in a few years, get that pension in the DR and let us spoil you. And if you don't know how to act, you'll bounce from there, too. He was like, Black, you, you sometimes, man, you just sound so bitter. And, and, and the thing is, these women was checking for you when we was growing up. And I'm like, bro, they were checking for me after I had these fights. I should be bitter, but I'm not bitter because of what they didn't like. I'm bitter because they lied. 
I'm bitter because of the secrecy and the double standards. And now they're doing the same thing to another generation of black boys. That's why I'm bitter. See, the thing is, he doesn't understand because he was not allowed to know when he was younger. None of us were. Some just figured it out and went on to be the players. But the thing is, what I'm getting at, Ms. Davis, is only that, see, the, these ladies, they actually shoot the shot. Now that LH was not even a bad woman, per se, just well beyond her prime, now that she's beyond her prime, she'll shoot her shot at dark. A year younger than, or two years younger than her. Yeah, two years younger than her and well shorter than her. Oh, now she will. Uh-uh, uh-uh. What about if she was in a prime? That means that dark is not her type. That's what that means. If he's her type now that she's mature, it's really more that he's her type now that she's just beyond the prime and doesn't have the same options. And she's seen that men will look at her and be like, oh, yeah, she's cute. And then keep on going because they're younger women. Like what she used to be. That's what that is. And so now that's, that's why these women wind up with these dudes. We're kept in the dark for a large portion of our lives. And what's happening now is that the younger generation of guys is, is benefiting from the experience that is being shared. And they're saying no. Now we've seen what the we've seen what the older men have gone through and have gone through, and we're not willing to tolerate that. We know that's an insult. Never mind. And that's the answer to the question why these women wind up, these the ones that will cheat wind up with these men. It's because for the most part, we we, we live where the men are vastly underappreciated. So you know, you're black and you're a man and you're not a stereotype. You pretty much have two choices. You stay in the community and you go below your own. Um, MMV, mate market value, whether it's marriage market, romantic market, or sexual market, whichever one it is, you go below your own MMV and get with somebody or you step out and go to, back to the continent if, if you go to the right part of the continent or you go to Latin America, preferably the one of the black enclaves there or maybe you go to Southeast Asia like Philippines or Thailand where they really be digging brothers um, or the southern Philippines and southern Thailand where they really be digging brothers if you're Muslim. Now, those are the options. Because Stan put stateside, well, I mean, you know, it's just, it's just not, it's not viable. Those women know that they're well below um, the market value of these men for whom they're going. But they think of themselves as I mean, you know, in terms of looks, they think of themselves as being above, but they know behaviorally they're well below. And that's exactly why it's set up like that. They all are in agreement. If Melanie King, when she was younger, was saying the things that she said a few years ago, or let's say about a year ago, she would have needed security because the hyenocracy, Ms. Davis, is against men being able to find a fair match. And they're so good at it that this is the end result and we're seeing that the women that are going to cheat are the ones that are going to be able to find these guys because the men are, you don't even have to be desperate. If you're a good and responsible, non-stereotypical black man, you don't have to be desperate to settle for them. You could literally just not know that's how she is and you don't know what to look for. She shoots a shot, the other women don't. She's not coming with the kids and the diseases and the debt. So you think this is a catch until she cheats because that's how, that's the game. It's set up that way from jump. It's rigged that way. That's all it is. That's why when men tell women should have chosen better, we're right. When they tell us you should have chosen better, they're wrong. Because they have a conspiracy. The hyenocracy is all in on the same conspiracy to make sure we don't have better to choose. They'll kill women for being better to, to choose and being available. Why you can't be like the rest of us? I don't want them to. I'm just saying that's what they do. And that's all we're seeing. And I appreciate you putting that out there. And I hope that what I said helps to answer that. I want to thank the rest of you uh, for listening again and for the support as always. Black heart, black mind, black out, assalamu alaikum, black heterosexual, non-select male power because they don't like it. Black patriarchy until extinction of judgment. And, uh, Thank you for flying on Jet Black Airways with us, where Jet Black is also a verb. Keep Jet Black with us till the wings and the wheels fall off. Gender justice forever. <laughs>